तो दोस्तों शुरू करते हैं विदाउट वेस्टिंग टाइम इन दिस वीडियो टॉक अबाउट द एंड पॉइंट सिक्योरिटी ग्रुप इन द एसीआई ओके एज वी नो वी नो अबाउट द ईपीजी एंड पॉइंट ग्रुप इट्स प्रोवाइड नेटवर्क सिक्योरिटी इन द एसीआई एंड ईपीजी हैव एन एट्रैक्ट रिलेशनशिप विद द बीडी ब्रिज डोमेन एंड इट्स प्रोवाइड सिक्योरिटी विद इन द बीडी एज वी नो ईपीजी डू ए टू थिंग इट्स हेल्प इन द फॉरवर्डिंग एंड सेगमेंटेशन बोथ एट द सेम टाइम so that's why i'm saying this is a direct relationship between the bd and ep here you can see that we have an avr of blue and uh, under that we are a blue we have an a four bd bd1 2 3 4 and their subnet and bd1 is associated with the epg1 bd2 is associated with the epg2 bd3 have an a one epg3 bd4 have an epg4 okay so normally when you want to con communicate between the epg1 and epg2 we need a contract okay this is here due to this direct Uh, relationship between the BD and EPG, okay, in the network centric mode in the ACI. So this uh, limit the possibility of EPG to span across the more than one BD, okay, as uh, EPG have an a relationship with the uh, one BD, so it cannot span between the BDs, okay. This is where our endpoint security group come into the picture. Here I show on the top level like EPG one, EPG two, EPG three. So normally, if you want to communicate EPG one to EPG two or EPG one to EPG three, you need to apply a contract. But if you simply uh, create a ESG endpoint security group, okay, under that if you simply call the EPG, then there will be no contract is required. They will be able to communicate with the each other. The contract usage in the ESG is same as uh, in the EPG, okay. Still, if you want to communicate with the ESG infra to ESG VPC endpoint security group infra to endpoint security group VPC, we still need a contract. Or if you want to communicate from this EPG, this ESG, sorry, and one security group to with the external world with the L3 out, so we need to define a contract with the end point security group and uh, EPG for the L3 out. Okay, so let's jump to the configuration. Let's see how we can configure the end point security group. So here we are on the ACI fabric. Okay, first we we will create the tenant. Let me get the tenant tenant name. Let's put the test is the tenant. Okay. Under test tenant, we have created a one VR. Let's put the name is VR of Blue. Okay. So we have created the even the tenant under tenant. If you see, we have created a VR of Blue. Okay. So let's create the bridge domain. Let's create the two BD. Okay. So bridge domain one. I am putting okay. I am putting this under the VR of Blue, which we created just. And I am doing the subnet configuration, configuring the IP on the BD, so I am putting the one dot one dot one dot one slash twenty four IP. Okay. Apply into next and that's it. Similar way, I am putting the one more BD. Putting the name for this BD is BD two. Okay, let's associate with the VRF blue again, and let's configure the subnet on this BD two. Two dot two dot two dot two. One slash twenty four. Okay. So, so the finish. So far, we have created the tenant, and we have created the VRF, and we have created the two bridge domain BD one and BD. If you click here, it will show just the refresh. Time. Okay, here we have an a two BD. Now let's go for the application profile. Okay. First, we'll create the application profile. EPM giving the name for that one EPG AP, and let's put the EPG. EPG name EPG one. Okay. With the EPG one, I am associating a bridge domain BD one. Okay, update. Similar way, I am creating one more EPG under this application profile. I am creating a two EPG, EPG one and EPG two. And EPG one is have a relationship with 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 the BD one, and EPG two have a direct relationship with the BD two. Okay. So now in this normal scenario, we have an application profile with a two EPG. If you want to come to EPG one to EPG two. We have to apply the contract, and then only company can apply. Allow. So, with the help of ESG, what we can do here under the 
Okay. okay, if we go under the application profile, okay, under the application profile, you go to AP, under that here, you can see we have an endpoint security group, right click, let's create the endpoint security group, so let's put this endpoint security group one if this is our is one okay let's put the score for the vrf is blue okay next okay so here we can either we can uh, select with the tag tag will help if we have assigned the tag with the epg okay in this option we can go with the epg select also or subnet select also let's now we can the epg selector if you do we need to select like i want to allow a communication with the epg1 and epg2 with the help of this endpoint security group, I need to select both one and the combination will be allowed after that. Or we can do with the help of subnet also. I can put the subnet also 1.1.1 slash 24. This is my first subnet. Okay. Similar way, I can put the my second subnet 2.2.2.2.1 slash 24. These are the two subnets we have confirmed the PD. Once we done that, we have to next and we need to finish okay after doing this, this is the one we required to configure a esc so this will uh, allow the communication the two endpoint group which are part of the same endpoint security group and here if you see this will show policy very showing so this have an journal which we have configured so result is the vrf is the tenant Okay. 